This is lecture three, part two. In part one, we talked about what is a neural network, why the name neural network, and how to use the neural network to predict something. So we, we have that exclusive all example. And here, we will talk about how we actually train a neural network to get the weights of each layer. So of course, we cannot just train each logistic perceptron separately and then combine them at the end, because we, if we do that, it looks like they should all be the same, but it turns out they are different. So we want to train all the weights at the same time. But the technique we're going to use is the same as logistic regression, which is gradient descent. So the only difference is the first main difference is the derivatives are very difficult to compute. So we need to use chain rule to compute these derivatives. And we give the training a more fancy name called backpropagation, but it's just di differentiating using chain rule, and we're still doing gradient descent. So that's the first difference. The second difference is the problem is no longer convex, so we have those local minimum problem, and we have the starting point and, and, and another set of problems associated with neural networks. We'll talk about these in lecture four. So we'll focus on how to mathematically do the derivatives for the rest of this lecture, which means we're done with the interesting stuff. Now we are starting the boring stuff, but they are useful if you actually want to get your neural network. So let's get started. And as I said, backpropagation is just another fancy name for gradient descent. So the steps should look exactly the same as logistic regression, which it is. So I'll start with random weights, activate, and then compute the gradient, and then update the weights. So it looks like exactly the same as gradient descent for logistic regression. And the only difference is we're using chain rule now. So, so the framework is the same. We'll just talk about how to deal with these derivatives. OK, so let's start with a two-layer neural network and we need the names first because we don't have like weight one weight two now we have like lots and lots of weights so we will first start with getting some names so this is our hidden unit one hidden unit two hidden unit three and this is our output unit say so some people call it Oh, I like to call it white hat, but they're not always equal. This one is between zero and one. This one is either zero or one. In, in any case, we need these weights like this. So where is our first logic regression? It's using the inputs to get the first activation. So we are not going to call this the weight number one. It's from unit one to hidden unit one. So we're calling it weight one one. And later we have multiple layers. So it may be good to have a superscript one and this one represent its layer one. Um, but we are not use it now. And this one will be from unit 2 to unit 1, so it's W2, 1, and so on. So you can probably guess what these are. These are W1, 2, and W2, 2. And the last set, these ones are W1, 3, and W2, 3. And we forgot the bias. So we need a bias for each one of these, each unit needs a bias, so we'll just call it B1, because there's no from, just 2 unit 1, and this will be B2, and this will be B3. So in case there are multiple layers, we will have a superscript 1 to, to represent which layer it is in. So the second one, there are only three, because the output layer is if it's a binary classification, there's only one unit, so we don't need two subscripts, so we'll just call this w1, w2, and w3. And in case there are multiple layers, we'll just have a superscript for the layer number. And 
there is something else we want to talk about. Is the activation function? Maybe we should break into two parts. Um, so if each activation is a. Um, let's not have a superscript. So let's say for this particular one is a three. A three is a function applied on w13 times x1, w23 times x2 plus b3, according, according to our notation. And this seems like complicated, so we'll break into two parts. Let's call this the linear part. Let's call it z3, and let's call this a3. So z3 is the linear part of the activation, and A3 is the actual activation. So these are the notations that we are going to use. And of course, the last one is A, which is called A, is G of Z. And let me maybe review what what the plan is, we have a cost function. So of course we need a cost function given the output y hat. We need a cost function here. And we start with some random w. Uh, now we have lots and lots of w's. No, so say w11, we start from this. And then we want to find the derivative, which is dcd11, and we move in the opposite direction of the derivative. So the, the expression that we were going to use is w11 is w11 minus some learning rate times this. So the goal is figuring out what this is. And we just do it once, do it twice, and we continue to do it until we hit the minimum. So for the logistic regression, remember we used some kind of complicated cross entropy cost function. So here we can use we can either use that or we can use the square a squared error loss. So it's just y hat minus the actual y square and sum it and we'll put a half in front so that when you differentiate this it cancels out with the two. So this will be our cost function. So from looking at this diagram, there are six weights and three bi bias terms in the first layer, and there are three weights and one bias term in the second layer. So there are lots of derivatives that we want to do. So I, I will show you the example of just calculating one of them, and in particular, that one. So we'll do it in the next slide. So let me draw this again in a more clear way. And uh, we will have the z's. So this is our z1, z2, z3. So remember, z's are the linear combinations. So we have our w11, say this is w21. And z is linked to a1 by the function g. So a1 is basically g of z. And this is a2. This is a3. But we we don't need all, all the connections. We are focusing on this. So all, all the other ways are not related. So we are not sure all of them. And all of these gets linked to our z, the last layer z, and a, and then a is related to the cost. So we have a diagram like this. So the thing we want is the derivative of c with respect to w21. And we want to suppose there's only one training data set. So let's assume only one instance. So remember, a data set, a sample point is also called an instance. Um, if that's the case, then our C is Y 
I mean a minus y squared half. So we can add these up for the different instances. So we could do that at the end. Let's think about the strategy. So we have this, and c is a function of a directly. And a is a function of z, so a is g of z. And this z is a function of that a is w1a1 plus w2a2 plus w3a3 plus b. And this z is a function of a, a1 in particular, and a1 is a function of z1. I'm missing a 1 here. And z1 now is a function of w21. So it's w11x plus w21x2 plus b1. So we have this chain of functions. So it seems chain rule is appropriate. So remember, chain rule is when we have f of g of x, when we want to take the derivative of the whole thing, we take the derivative of x, I mean, the, the derivative of the outer function f first, and then we take the derivative of g, the inner function, and we multiply them together. So chain rule for the multivariate case is similar. We just take the derivative of c with respect to a first, and then we multiply the derivative of a with respect to z, and then z with respect to a1, and so on, until we get to the end. So let's actually write down the chain. So it's derivative of c with respect to a, a with respect to z, z with respect to a1. So at this point, we can also take the derivative of z with respect to a2, but it seems z, a2 is not related to w21, so we don't need those. And in part three of the lecture, we'll talk about the case where we have more layers and we actually need to go through more, more branches. But here we only have z with respect to a1 and a1 with respect to z1 and z1 with respect to w21. So it seems very complicated, but each step is okay. So let's start with the last one. So that's just taking derivative of this expression with respect to a. So it's just two gets canceled out with the half. So that's why we have a half. So uh, this becomes a minus y. First step, a with respect to z is that it's just this g prime. Right. So remember g prime, when g is logistic, we have a special form. So g prime of x, when g is logistic, is equal to g of x, 1 minus g of x. So I think we went through the algebra last time, so I will not do it again here. So basically, this is just g of x is g of z here, it's just a, so it's times a times 1 minus a. So this part is this. And now, next, z with respect to a1, what's this? z with respect to a1 is just the coefficient w1. And then a1 with respect to z1 is this, so it's again g prime, so it's a1 1 minus a1. And last thing, z1 with respect to w21, which is this, so it's x2. So it seems there's no pattern, it's just a bunch of random stuff getting multiplied together. So we'll figure out the pattern again in the last part of the lecture when we have even more layers. But here you can just see this as a bunch of derivatives multiplied together, you will get the, the derivative at the end. So there are a few complications to this very simple case. First, we're assuming only one instance, so we need to put the sum somewhere and we need to index these somehow. And that part is summarized in the next few slides. And of course, the second, second problem is having more layers. 
and we'll do it in the next part. Uh, and so let's actually go through what we did with more complicated notations. Um, but the I, I idea is the same. So as long as you understand what's happening here, you should be okay. I'll just re repeat what I did. So at the beginning, we have this cost function, and the cost function has the sum. So we're summing over all instances. That's the first complication. And, and these expressions are the same as what I wrote, just with more general number of hidden units. So M1 is the number of hidden units, or I also call it hidden neurons, in layer 1. And then AIJ1 is the I, is for instance I, and J is for hidden unit J. And WJ2, we had that already, is the second layer J's unit weight. And this is second layer bias term. And these notations are the same. And the important one is this one. This is the weight from J prime in the previous layer. Here is layer one, so it's layer zero. Layer zero is input layer, which means they are the features, so they are the x values. From the j's input to j, j's unit in the next layer. So again, these are the same expressions as I wrote, but just with more complicated notations. And I su summarize what I said here, so I'm not going to read this again. And there are these things that we want to compute basically lots of them. So these are the first layer weights and bias terms, and these are the second layer weights and bias terms. So we have a lot to compute, but each one will compute them separately. So the second layer is just one level of chain rule. So we did a first layer chain rule, which is, well, more complicated than this, so you should be able to understand this as well. And uh, the first layer is the example that I actually had. But the general form for any weight j prime to j is given by this. And we're taking derivatives layer by layer. I mean, not layer by layer, but part by part. So we start with the c with respect to a. And that part is very simple. It's just a simple derivative. And then we differentiated a with respect to z. And we saw from the last time, it's just this g1 minus g thing. And z with respect to w is just a. We saw that as well with the example. And again, these are just very general formulas. You don't need to know how to derive them, but you, you, you just need to know how to go through a specific example like the one I did. And for the program assignment, though, you do need to use general matrices to store these things. So maybe you should at least understand what, what these notations mean so that you can implement them. And in, in any case, this is just going back again. And at the end, this is a summary. Now we have all the derivatives. So these ones, the first layer ones are complicated. The second layer ones are like, OK, so from this, it seems like part of these are the same. So maybe we can save some computation when computing the previous layer way derivatives. Uh, again, we will talk about this in the next part. And so here are the formulas that you need to use basically for programming homework one. And of course, we have the gradient descent step. And it's just every time we update the weights, by subtracting, remember it's subtracting, don't add the derivatives. Subtract the derivatives and multiply it by a learning rate. So the learning rate, figuring out the learning rate is basically the same as the largest regression. You just try different ones and see if every step we're going too far or every step we're not going as far as we want.
um, but the basic structure is the same. We just have these things harder to compute. Okay, so we will have a quiz problem during the lecture, but that's basically the end of a simple example of gradient descent for neural network.